Hi everyone, I'm Liz. And welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. <laughs> guys welcome back in today's video we're making king size pillowcases <laughs> okay let me put these down so today's video is all about making pillowcases um this method is the burrito style that has been um wildly popular for many years um it's the first way i learned how to make a pillowcase so i have a link below to a written tutorial but in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I put together um, a king size version of a normal pillowcase. It's the exact same process, you just need a little bit more fabric. You can, of course, make this in a standard pillowcase size um, and with any fabric you like. I made these because I wanted some Christmas themed pillowcases for our bed this year. So, um, of course, you know, make them with whatever fabric you like. They'll all turn out super cute. Make sure and check the description box below for links to the written tutorial, as well as instructions, supplies I used, and anything you might need. If something's not listed, please leave it in a comment below and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so let's look at the fabrics I have. Um, these are all fabrics from Ruby Star Society. These three specifically are from their new Christmas line. I think it's called Jolly... Oh yeah, it's right here. <laughs> Jolly Darlings. So these are from the Jolly Darlings line. And then this one is from the Jolly Basics. And these are both just from different Basics lines from Ruby Star. And so I bought these two prints for the main fabrics for our pillowcases. Um, this one's gonna be Rob's because he loves octopuses. And so um, I thought that was so cute with the little Christmas lights. And then I love this little reindeer um, print. So this will be for the main body. And then they will also have a cuff and a piece of trim. And so I need to decide what the cuff will be made out of and then what the trim um, will be, like, I was kind of thinking something like that, um, yeah, I think I like the red, or should that be the cuff? No. Okay. So I think, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is the same, um, accent and cuff on both pillows. So if I have enough fabric, I'll have to measure this and see, but I think I should have enough fabric to do the same fabric for the cuff and then the same accent trim. So that way our pillowcases kind of match. Um, but not really, because you know, we each have a different print, but I think they'll be so cute. And I am making the king size um, pillowcase size for our bed pillows. We have two kind of standard size pillows, but then we also have two king size pillows on our bed. And so I want these to be king size. This fabric is so cute, but I don't think I want dot on dot for the trim. No. I'm gonna go with them. I'm gonna stick with the green. Yeah, okay, awesome. Let me get everything cut out. Um, I'm sure I mentioned this at the start of the video, but of course the tutorial I'm using is linked below with measurements. So, um, you know, I'll post uh, the measurements I'm using here on the screen, but um, yeah, you can find this tutorial online if you want to make it in different sizes. Okay, so um, what I've just noticed is that this print is directional and I was kind of checking to see if the octopuses were directional and they're not. I think I can run them um, long ways, but for these guys, I think it really does look better um, if I run the fabric this direction. And so what that means is I'm gonna need to cut out my fabric a little bit differently and this is actually going to um, use up a little bit more fabric than it would if I was, you know, running my pillowcase this way. Um, but I have plenty. I think I bought a yard and a half of this just because I knew I was going to make a king size pillowcase. So I bought some extra and I'm glad I did because, um, instead of being able to just cut, you know, my pillowcase out this way and then have the, um, reindeer look like this, I'm going to open this fabric up and be able to cut it out this direction. Um, wide I'll open this up in a second um and you'll see and that way the reindeer look a little bit more intentional I think running this direction even though they're still kind of scattered and like some of them are upside down I still think it looks nicer if I run it 
this way. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so my first step is going to be to cut this fabric down into a 42 inch, actually, let me fold it the other way. Let me create a straight edge on one end. Okay, so this is now cut down to 42 inches. And so now what I need to do is open this up, or actually no, I'm not even gonna open it up. So what I'm gonna do is measure from the center because now I need, when this fabric is open wide, I need it to be 35 inches wide. And so I know this is about 42, so I'm gonna be cutting off, you know, about here. So I am just going to measure um, see, so half of 18, or sorry, half of 35 inches is 17 and a half. So I'm going to use my big long ruler here. And I'm going to go to 17 and a half. So if you have a directional print, that is how you can cut out your fabric um, to get it to the right size and the direction going the right way. But you will need, um, you know, a yard and a quarter at least of fabric um, rather than just a yard of fabric. So just keep that in mind if your fabric is directional. But basically, now um, when this gets sewn together eventually, uh, It looks great. That's how the fabric will run. Um, let me just make sure this is all nice and square because it's not looking square yet. <laughs> okay, actually, never mind. It looks nice and square. I just needed to lay it out. Okay, so this is the main body of my pillow. Let me get Rob's cut out and I can do that one the traditional way because, yeah, the octopuses look good running this direction as well as. Or do they look better this direction? Uh, maybe they're better this direction. Okay, I'm going to cut it out the same way I just cut out mine. what fabric base Ruby Star is using right now, but it almost feels like an art gallery fabric to me, like the super thin, soft quilting fabric. Um, I feel like these are gonna make such good pillowcases, like just super soft, so. Um, also, okay, I did not pre-wash. Um, if you're really worried about fabric shrinking, pre-wash. Um, I am just making my pillowcase like, you know, a half inch loose and assuming I'll lose a little bit of shrinkage when I wash these, which I will wash these before I use them, but I prefer to cut and sew with fabric that has not been washed. Um, so, you know, I'm just living on a prayer <laughs> and hoping that when I wash it, it does not shrink too much, which I mean, I make quilts and wash them all the time. So I'm, you know, I'm aware it'll be like about a half inch of shrinkage. So I think I'm accounting for that in my construction so it will not be a big deal if these shrink a little bit so yeah let me i got the um two main body pieces cut out um so you know they'll go it'll end up running like this those super cute octopuses um so now i just need to get the trim piece and the cuffs cut out so let me get those cut out and we'll start assembling Okay, I just messed up. Did you see it happen? Um, I was supposed to cut 
these at nine inches and I accidentally cut 10 inches and this is a half yard of fabric, meaning it should be about 18 inches. So you can't cut 10 and 10 from 18 inches. You can cut nine and nine. Um, it looks like this piece is just about nine inches. So I think I'm just gonna cut this one down. Um, <laughs> oh, let's see if it's nine inches all the way, all the way down. No, it goes down to eight and a half inches. I'm gonna make my cuffs a little bit smaller and I'm just gonna cut mine to eight and a half instead of nine inches. Um, oh well. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay, yeah, I'm just cutting them down to eight and a half inches. Dang, I'm so mad I messed that up. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is take the little trim piece over to the ironing board and fold it in half and press it. Okay, so I have my trim piece and um, it's time to kind of assemble our little pillowcase burrito. I'm gonna press this fold out real quick. So I've got everything laid out and I'm gonna pin on this top edge through all three of my layers. Okay, so I have the top edge pinned and here is where we start the burrito method. And we do that by rolling up the end of our fabric. Sorry, I'm probably off camera right now, but let me just roll. Okay, so you just roll your main fabric up until it's right up to that top edge. And then you bring your cuff piece around and join it to the pins right here. You make this little tube. So, all I'm gonna do is just pin between those other ones. Yep, so let me just move all of my pins up onto the top layer. Okay, so I've got everything nicely pinned. And so all I'm gonna do is go over to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew a quarter inch seam all the way down this tube and I'll be right back. Okay, so I um, got that long uh, edge sewn down with a quarter inch seam. And so now we have this little tube of pillowcase. And so starting at one end, I'm just gonna start rolling this back and tugging on the inner tube to um, release all the contents of the pillowcase. So now you just have a big, huge, flat piece of fabric <laughs> with your little trim and your cuff. Um, I'm gonna take this over to the ironing board and press everything nice and flat. Um, I am going to leave the trim facing this direction. So I'll roll out the seam and make sure I press it nice and flat. Um, but even though I didn't have a full nine inches, I think my cuff still looks really cute and I think it'll still be the right size for my pillow. So let me go get this pressed and then I'll talk about the two last seams that you need to sew up your pillowcase. So I got everything pressed nice and flat. So we've got our cute little flange trim detail. Um, so now we're ready to sew the pillowcase together. And it's just two more seams that we need. Let me clear off this table here. Okay, so you want to fold your fabric. Well, actually, okay, first I need to trim off, as you see, 
Um, I had some excess on the sides because these were both with the fabric and I cut my fabric down. So let me square off the ends of my cuff here. And you can see why this burrito method is so cool because all of the edges on the inside of the pillow are going to be finished. Um, this, you know, doing the burrito method is how it gets all nice and finished inside. All of our raw edges are tucked up inside the um, seam allowance of the cuff. And then we're about to sew a French seam to close the inside seam. So it's going to be such a nice, pretty finished pillowcase. Okay, so the French seams that I was just talking about. So we're going to start by folding our pillowcase in half and we're gonna match up our cuff and make sure our trim matches perfectly right here. And give that a good pin, because I don't want, this is basically the only point on the pillowcase that really needs to match. So I'm just gonna make sure I pin it. Okay, and then I'll just give the rest of the body a few more pins. So now what I'm going to do is do the French seam. And so to do a French seam, you sew your seam first with the right sides facing out, um, which is a little bit backwards, but then you flip everything inside out so that the right sides are touching and you sew another seam. And what that means is all of your raw edges are then encased inside the seam of the pillow and they're not showing anywhere and you won't have any, you know, frays or rough edges inside your pillow. Um, so the first step is going to be to sew all the way down the right side of the pillow and then pivot and sew all the way across the bottom. And I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance um, for the first seam. Okay, so I have my quarter inch seam all down the side and bottom of the piece. Um, I did lengthen my stitch lengths to a 3.0. Um, it's not quite, 4.0 is what I consider a basting stitch, but 3.0 is a pretty loose stitch, but that's because this is not our final seam. Um, so I don't know, you don't, it's not necessarily something you have to do. You can leave your machine on 2.0 or 1.8. I usually sew on like 1.8 or 2.0, but anyways, I just lengthen it to go a little quicker on this seam because now we're going to flip this inside out and do one more seam to create our French seam. So all I'm going to do, I am going to take this to the ironing board and press before I sew, but just so I can show you, I'm going to roll the seam all the way out and press it nice and flat. And then I'm going to use a 3 8 inch seam. Um, and because I used a quarter inch on the first one, I want to use a slightly larger stitch or a slightly larger seam allowance. So I'm going to use a 3 8 inch to come all the way down. And that way, when we turn it back inside out, um, all of our, oops, I'll have to trim those threads, but all of our raw edges will be encased inside and we'll have a nice pretty inside and outside to the pillow. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so now I've sewn my 3 8 inch seam all the way down um, the side and the bottom again. And so let's turn it inside out and make sure I got all of my seam allowance enclosed. Okay, and then let me just see. Um, I just have a couple of loose threads, but it looks like I got all of my fabric in case, so I'm just going to trim up the loose threads. Okay, so that is one king size pillowcase complete, and I think it looks so cute. Um, I am obsessed with these French seams. I think it makes everything look so nice. And this pillowcase just took me, I think about, I don't know, 20 minutes to sew. It took me about maybe 20 minutes to cut everything out and then 20 minutes to sew one of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, reindeer one made and I'll show you how they look all finished up and on the bed. One thing I'm really making sure of is that this tube in here is staying away from the seam because I wouldn't want to catch any of this um, 
in the seam I'm sewing because then you wouldn't be able to pull it out later, so. Got them all freshly washed and put on the bed. So cute. Absolutely love how they turned out. Okay, so that's it. That's how I make pillowcases. They are so easy. Um, French seams are really great and make the insides of these pillowcases look so nice and finished. The burrito method leaves a really nice finished edge for the cuff. Um, really not too much fabric, right? Like for super custom pillowcases, it's probably, you probably need about $15 worth of fabric and you definitely could use what you have in your stash. So anyways, this was a super fun project and I highly recommend if you want to make some custom pillowcases. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.